All right, rule number four of tantrum hacking, don't fight with lizards. I wanna turn this into t-shirts or hats or something. I mean, I feel like this is one of the foundational basics that I try and drill into parents that I coach or that I, you know, when I speak at places and, and I talk about this, that I try and just really hammer this home. Uh, don't fight with lizards. So we've already established, right? When your kid is escalated, when they are losing it, when they are in their amygdala and their sympathetic nervous system is flooding their brain with all of these uh, hormones, epinephrine and adrenaline to get them ready to fight and or run away and all of these things, that they are in what we call their lizard brain, their limbic system, their lizard brain. And one of the, the things that we talked about, obviously in rule one is, you know, you don't want to encourage them to be in that state. You don't want to give them more things to be afraid of and and therefore can increase their their lizard state, you know, prolong that experience for them. But you also don't want to try and teach or discipline or correct or punish if that's something that you that you do. You don't want to do that stuff when they're in their lizard brain. And I wanna offer you this too, this is kind of an extra nugget, I wasn't even gonna say this, but this is a good point. Um, you also shouldn't do any of those things when you're in your lizard brain either, right? You shouldn't fight with lizards, but you also shouldn't fight with your lizard. Like you shouldn't use your brain um, when it's in those places, because honestly, you're making terrible, um, unthoughtful, reactionary decisions in those moments. Uh, we've all had those moments as adults. We, we know, you know, when that thing just like sets us off and we wind up, you know, going off on some poor person who, who you know, screwed up our hotel reservation or like the, the lady behind the counter at the, at the airline and you're, you're like screaming at her and you're just like not even in your, you don't even recognize yourself and your wife's like, what are you doing? Like, that, like we've been there, right? Maybe I'm just the only one who's been there, but we've been there. So don't, don't uh, try and parent them in any sort of, you know, high brain way when you're not in your high brain, when you're in your lizard brain, but also don't try and parent them when they're in theirs. And, and I know that this is really hard because the moments when we have been taught that we're supposed to correct and discipline our kids are when they are in the midst of their lizard state. Um, but it is incredibly foolish to do that. And, and I, I don't wanna say that it's like really harmful to do that, right? Like you're not like gonna cause your kid to become like a serial killer or something if you discipline them when they're in their limbic system. It's not harmful. What it is is incredibly inefficient and ineffective. Um, and the reason for this is, like we said, all of their rela uh, rational, logical, relational parts of their brain are in their neural cortex. This is where, you know, the memory is kind of all over the brain. You have memories that are stored kind of in your limbic system. PTSD is a great example of memories that are stored in your lower lizard brain. Memories are stored all over, but complex cause and effect type memories are best stored and best accessed in your neural cortex, not in your lizard brain. So let me give you an example of this, right? So like if your kid does something that just seems totally ridiculous to you, which kids, by the way, they do this all the time, right? And they're like little research scientists. They're, they're just getting into messes and doing little experiments all the time. And sometimes they make a huge mess. And so one of the things that kids like to do, especially three or four years old, take their bowl of cereal and they'll just throw it. And if you're a fool like me and you don't have plastic bowls, we only have ceramic bowls, that usually means that the bowl hits the ground, it shatters, and milk and cereal is sprayed, you know, nine foot radius in all directions. And, and you can just see in that moment all of the cleanup, all of the cleaning that you had already done that's now been ruined and like maybe your in-laws are coming over later and you're like, oh man, I know how tempting it is in that moment to just want to discipline the kid right then and there because you are in the state of like reactivity. Right? You're not quite in fight or flight, but you're in the reactive state. You're not thinking necessarily before you want to react. But here's why this is really foolish. As soon as you react with the like, what are you doing? 
or whatever that is, and then they're sent into a tantrum, you gotta pull back. The reason for this is anything you say at that point is just not gonna land, right? Like you can say, we don't do this and we don't do that and look at this big mess you caused and now I'm gonna you know, take away your toy because I'm really upset and you made me clean up this big mess or you're gonna have to help me and you're gonna have to clean up all this by yourself. All of that stuff is, is going into a brain that doesn't have access to its underdeveloped neural cortex. I mean, like they, they, in, in many ways, they're cut off from their higher brain in those moments. And until you go through that listening and a step two, again, that listening and observing and, and, and guiding them back into their, pre, their neural cortex, but until you do that, they don't have the faculties available to internalize anything that you're saying. This is why parents tell me all the time, like, well, I just, I yell at them for this over and over and like there's a screaming fit and then we just seem, it seems like we have to do it over and over and they never get the point, the picture. It's like, yeah, well, you're, you're never teaching them in moments when they have full use of their beautiful, big, amazing brain. Uh, you're teaching them in moments when they're being run by something the size of an almond and you're expecting all of the complex words and phrases that you're using that can't even really be interpreted because their language centers are basically offline to to like internalize these and create a cause and effect relationship where oh i really shouldn't do that anymore um that's not how their brain works they're they're not in a place of receptivity and so you don't fight with lizards and you don't teach lizards either uh, you don't lecture lizards you wait until your kid is completely calm before you do those things. And if you need to step away, if you need to go, hey, look, I need to go take a 90 second timeout for dad in the closet, um, or I need to go walk away from this situation and let mom come and deal with this right now, that is perfectly okay. It is way worth your time to calm yourself down, to then calm your kid down, get them into a calm state, and then address this in a brief, you know, we talk about that in another class, how, how you actually teach these things and discipline well, and not in many of the ways that we were taught. But you have to do that to receptive brains. If you're doing this to a disintegrated lizard, then then nothing that you're, you're, you're reasoning with a lizard, you're fighting with a lizard, you're rationalizing to a lizard, stop. It's it, you, your time is more valuable. Your sanity is more valuable than to do that. So rule number four, super simple. It seems obvious to many people, but, but yet we still do this. I see this constantly. I see it in public. I see it all the time. Don't fight with lizards. Um, and, and if you need me to put this on a t-shirt, I mean, leave a comment below, whatever. If you'd buy the shirt, I'll, I'll make them. If it will stop parents from doing this, I will do whatever is in my power to help you do that. So rule number four, don't fight with lizards. Just don't do it.